How's it guys? Uh, today we're going to be talking about quite an enigmatic little species. Um, one that's not necessarily a big rock and surf species, but definitely a very, very big species in the fly fishing world. Uh, of course, we're talking about bonefish. Now, bonefish, the species we get here is Albula glossodonta. Um, there's a lot of confusion around that whole Albula genus because there were previous, it was previously um, Albula vulpes, as far as I know, and um, the scientists have looked into it and found it's actually not that species, it's a whole lot of others. So at the moment it, it's Glossodonta, but that could, uh, once there's a bit more research done into it, it could actually change. We could find we have multiple species. Anyway, that's me prattling on. Um, bonefish. So if you don't know them, they're quite a torpedo shaped fish. So meaning they're very round like that in, in cross section and they're a bit flattened on the bottom and their mouth comes down sort of to a point like that. Now that's to facilitate feeding on the bottom, they've got their mouth comes to a point. So they're designed to feed very similar to a grunter, not blowing out as such, but to of picking off, off the bottom like that. Which sort of leads you into how, how and where you're going to find them. Um, shallow water, generally and they're very popular flats game fish so flats are those very shallow sandy eel grass type areas that you get not necessarily in South Africa but when you go up to Seychelles Mauritius and then of course across to Florida Keys and stuff again in America um, they also love mangrove areas they are extremely strong fighting fish for their size pound for pound they are incredible fighters this is due to the they got a very big tail, very, very pronounced tail for the size of the fish. And with that torpedo shape, they're very streamlined. So they're used to hunting in water. If the fish is that thick, you can hunt in water that thick. They actually can stick their backs out the water and feed along. So he's very proficient in the, in the very shallow water. They have an overall very, very shiny color to them. Um, their scales are very, very reflective. So that's given them the name glass, glass ghost or ghost of the fats. The flats, not the fats. Um, and some of the fishermen actually describe them as being chiseled out of ice. That's how. That's what they look like. The, they, they've got this sort of very glassy look to them. Um, for their size, they've got quite a big eye. Um, very good vision. So obviously this leads to them feeding in the shallow water, being able to see the little tiny prawns and stuff that they feed on. And then obviously as we say, feeding on the prawns, prawns, shrimp, little squid and things like that, even little fish, they're going to be like little gobies and stuff on the flats is what they're really going to, going to go for. Um, in terms of their movement and how they move about, on the flats they move up with the high tide, on that, on that push of the tide. Um, and in terms of movement overall, they, they've done a lot of tagging with these fish. Um, both here in South Africa and across. Um, for the tagging project here run by Ori, they have done, they've only actually ever had one recapture of the bonefish from countless number of ones that have tagged. And this they think is probably due to high predation, which they have seen across in, um, in other parts of the world. So you are, they are putting tagged individuals in, but they're speeding off and getting eaten by something. Um, that also then leads to one of the big benefits of bonefish, which is they make a very, very good bait. If you're on the north coast of KZN, blackfin, love, love a bonefish, a live bonefish, or dead if you can swim them, or slide them out. Um, also kingies, big GTs love eating bonefish, and any of your other shark species also really, really enjoy it. And then for your offshore guys, um, they also work very well as a marlin bait. Because of their streamlined structure and they're very tough, tough meat, you can pin them and trawl them at very high speeds and skip them along the top and he's not going to disintegrate. Like we said, very popular sport fish. Um, on the fly, you're going to be targeting them sort of with an 8 to 10 weight type thing, depending obviously where you're fishing. Um, shrimp and crab patterns mainly and then any little little Charlie type things. Here in KZN, and particularly northern KZN, you're going to be looking at generally targeting them on the, the far sandbanks. So small streamline baits, little bay squid, deadly, little prawn bomb type thing um, on a very long cast. Otherwise a cutlet bomb. So two cutlets put together like that, nice and streamlined, throw it as far as you can. Um, 
and yeah, you're pretty likely to get uh, tied into a bonefish during summer. So yeah, the bonefish, he gets up to about a meter in length, um, and really, they do get to nine kilos, but whether we'd ever get them out to that size is unlikely. You're normally looking at about a kilo, th kilo to three kilos. Obviously, you do get bigger fish. Um, and yeah, the maximum age they've recorded them to is 19 years. So fairly quick growing, but quite a long living species. So yeah, the bonefish. If you haven't targeted them, targeted them yet, they are tricky to do specifically. But once you walk into one, you'll, you'll know about it. Cheers, guys.